final gradient is the conic gradient, or at least the final gradient that I want to talk about in my CSS beginner playlist. Again, we use a div container and I give that a width and a height. We add a class size and let me add a background minus color. We add a class gradient, both are given to the div container. And I've got a typo somewhere. Sorry about that, it's height, obviously. Now we can see our div container. Now let's add our gradient. For conic gradients, we also use the background minus image property. Then we'll add our gradient and brackets. And in this case, we don't use linear and we don't use radial. We simply use conic minus gradient. Now let's add some colors. Red, red and yellow maybe again. And you can see that it goes clockwise. So first color starts at 12. And the second color ends at 12. And if I want to invert it, I'll just invert the order of my colors. I can, as always, add more colors. If I want to adjust the position of these colors, I can once again use degrees. Let me, for example, use 45 and maybe 90 or 190 for red. And you can see this also works for conic gradients. Let's just say we want to create a pie chart. Let me add a pie class here to our div container. But first we'll take care of the colors. Let me add a fourth one, maybe blue. I want to use these four colors to create a pie chart. To do that, we'll simply use the border minus radius property, make it 50% for our div container. And this is going to turn this into a circle. But we still have a gradient and usually, unusually you don't have that when it comes to pie charts. There's only the color and they don't blend into one another. Sounds weird, but we can still use a gradient to achieve that. We simply have to move the borders of these color blends. We'll start at 0 degrees, which is 12 o'clock for yellow. And then we target yellow yet again and set this to the end value. Let's say 45 degrees. And now you can see our first segment 0 to 45 degrees is plain yellow. And now we start with red at 45 degrees. So where the yellow ends and then target red again with the end position. Let me make that 90. And now we have two segments and a very clear cut between these two pie segments. And this is the way you can do that. There's also a shorter way of writing this. I'll show you this later on.
All right, let me get back to simple colors, to a simple gradient. We have four in total. First up, we can reposition the center point and we simply use the add value for that. And then first value is the X position, second value is the Y position. I believe 145 and uh, 145 is already too deep. Let me go to maybe 80 and 80. This should be the bottom right. So first value is the X position, left to right, second value the Y position, top to bottom, just in case you have to reposition your center point here. You can also change the orientation, so it always starts at 12 by default, but by using the from value, and it's obviously not percent, in this case it's degrees. From 90 degrees, this makes it start at 3, 180 would be 6, and so forth. And zero, once again as a reminder, this was 12 o'clock. Finally, we can add a repeat effect here as well. And here I can show you the short way of writing these pie chart color positions. Let us use these four colors yet again. I'll start with yellow and at zero degrees. And instead of targeting the color again, I simply add the end position 10 degrees right after it. Same for red, we'll start at 10 and I make it 20. Green, I start at 20, make it 30. Blue, 30 to 40. Last color will also fill the rest of the circle. So bluish color, sorry for the typos here, but now we've got it. What now if we wanna have the segment repeated? Well, just like with the other gradients, we'll add repeating before conic gradients. So we have repeating minus conic minus gradient. And this now repeats our colors in 10 degree increments until the entire circle is filled. As always, try it out yourself. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.